So I tell you guys this because I trust you and because I know there's no judgment, just to show you that we've all been there and I myself am currently here with you. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, hey, my name is Austin and I am a beauty and style content creator based here in New York City. And I also have a nine to five job working at a tech startup. In today's video, we are going to address something that I get asked about all the time, which is how do you find time to balance a nine to five full-time job and also your side hustles of content creation? So if you've been following along for a little while, you're probably familiar with my backstory, but in case you're not, I previously worked as a magazine editor at Nylon and Interview here in New York. And then after those magazines folded, I was full-time freelance for a little while. So I was my own boss. I was doing the self-employment kind of journey here in New York. And while I was self-employed, I had obviously a lot more time to dedicate to my personal content creation, which is why for a long time you guys were seeing two videos a week here on my YouTube channel. But since I started my nine to five again at Jump Rope, I have gone down to one video a week. And I think that that makes a lot more sense having a nine to five job. But I'm also still posting content to Instagram, to my blog, now to TikTok too. So I wanted to share some tips about how to optimize your time to make the most of your your schedule and actually bang out a lot of work in time that you might not know that you had. In this video, we're going to talk about how to figure out when you're most productive, how to make a realistic schedule that you can stick to so that you can still advance your side hustles while you're in a full-time job. We're also going to talk about how to hold yourself accountable, how to find blocks of time in the day that you might not know are there for you to take advantage of, a couple of tips for streamlining your workflow, and also how you can incorporate content creation into your day-to-day -day life so that you don't feel like you have to go out of the way to create new content. If you enjoy videos with tips kind of dedicated to content creators, please subscribe and stick around as I upload new videos every Sunday related to this and also new kind of beauty videos talking about new products and releases and launches in the beauty industry. And also don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you find the information in it useful. Let's dive in with the first thing I want to talk about, which is finding time where you are most productive. So I have had my blog for just over seven and a half years now, and I've had a YouTube channel for two and a half years. And although, as I mentioned, I did spend some time as a full-time freelancer, before that I was balancing my blog and all of my extra content creation, both with college and then with full-time jobs as a magazine editor. I think most people already can guess where I'm going with this, but in many cases you are either an early bird or a night owl. I am personally an early bird. I love getting up early and having that feeling of having done something productive before I even start my day. And I'm not even necessarily talking about waking up, you know, at the actual crack of dawn. I think getting up around an hour before you normally would get up would still give you a ton of time that you can dedicate towards your business that you might not even know is there. Let's take me and my job right now. So for example, as I was just saying, I still work a full-time job and I've been getting up around 6.30, which usually gives me an extra hour in the mornings before I head into work to work on my own content. And if you think about spending just an hour a day on your side hustle or side business, that's 365 hours, which gives you back almost two weeks, like two full weeks of time. So even if you can dedicate a small amount of time each day to your business and what you're working towards, it's going to make such a difference in the long run. If you're someone who's more productive in the evenings, definitely consider setting aside an hour after dinner if you're able to, to kind of just sit down and really focus in on one or two tasks for your business that you feel like you can accomplish in that time frame. The next thing I want to talk about is making a schedule for yourself. And making a schedule as a content creator is actually helpful for two reasons. The first reason, is that it keeps you in line and it gives you some deadlines to keep in mind for when you're going to create content and when you'd like to put it out into the world. And secondly, it's also beneficial to your audience because they are able to know when they're going to hear from you. For example, you might have heard me say on this channel that I upload new videos every Sunday. So you know that every Sunday you can expect a new video from me on my YouTube channel and you can expect new blog posts over on my blog on Wednesdays. When you sit down to make your schedule, remember that it doesn't have to be an overly ambitious schedule. It can actually be something really simple. So you wanna make sure that it is a realistic schedule so that you can actually follow through on when you want to be sharing content. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that as 
I mentioned earlier in this video, when I was a full-time freelancer, I was able to put out two videos a week on this channel, so my upload schedule used to be Monday and Friday, but I know now that I am back in a full-time role that two videos a week is not realistic for me. So as long as I've clearly communicated that to my audience, which I try to do through verbal reminders in videos and also through my channel art that you can see up above on my channel that like physically spells out that I upload new videos every Sunday, people are okay with that because they understand that I can only fit in so much content creation in a week and I like to be able to give them quality content rather than just a quantity of videos for the sake of uploading. Once you have this schedule in mind, I find it personally helpful to share it with someone whose opinion you really trust because they can also tell you if they think it sounds realistic based on what they know about you and what your other responsibilities might be in life, whether you're also a parent or whether you have two jobs or whether you, you know, work all morning and so then filming at nighttime might not be optimal because of the lighting. So I think reaching out to maybe a trusted coworker or a childhood friend or even your roommate or significant other can be great because they can definitely look at it from your perspective and understand what might be realistic for you and then they can also kind of help keep you accountable once you've shared your content plan with them. My next big tip is to optimize your commute and you can do this with one of two different things. The first suggestion I have if you are someone who takes public transportation to work and is able to sit on a subway or a bus or a train as you go into the office, I find it really helpful to read on your commute because it's a fun way to pass the time and it also gives your eyes a break from your screen and I think that that is a great way to dive into topics that you might be interested in related to your industry. So for example, for me that might mean reading the autobiography of the founder of a beauty brand or it might mean reading a book about business and marketing for influencers. And if you're not able to do that, if you do drive to work or bike to work or whatever it is, you might consider podcasts as well. Podcasts are an amazing way to digest new information about an industry or a topic that you're interested in. And it really doesn't require a lot of you other than your attention. Podcasts have become my favorite thing to listen to on commutes. And I try to keep it fun and alternate between business podcasts and podcasts about the Bachelor franchise because that is just another hobby of mine on the side of all of this, but two of my favorite podcasts to listen to about business and self-employment, especially for influencers, are The Influencer Podcast by Julie Solomon and also The Gold Digger Podcast by Jenna Kutcher. These have both been incredible resources for me as a content creator, and I love that I'm able to learn so much in my 30 to 40 minute commute into the office and feel like that time that could have otherwise been wasted has now been optimized and that it's helped me in some way get a little bit closer to a achieving some of my goals as a creator. If you find you don't have a super high attention span, you can set goals for yourself to just read, you know, one chapter on your way in, or you can also find podcasts that are on the shorter side and only listen to podcasts that are maybe 15 minutes in length so that you don't feel like you are struggling to stay focused on one topic. Cause I know that's a complaint and an issue that a lot of people do have with podcasts and books that, you know, tend to kind of drag on and take up a lot of time. So once you've decided when you're most productive and you've really thought through and figured out different ways that you could potentially optimize your commute and also hold yourself accountable by sharing your schedule with a friend or trusted coworker is to find easy ways to streamline your workflow. And by this, I mean, make the process all around easier for you so that you can actually commit to the schedule that you set in place for yourself. I actually just published a blog post last month on my website with four tools that help streamline my content creation. So I'll link that down below in case you'd like to go check it out after you watch this video. I talk through a scheduling tool that I've been using that actually not only helps me make a content schedule, but that can also post to social media accounts for me. And I also talk about Jump Rope, which is actually where I work full time. This is a video editing app that has allowed me to create more content kind of on a daily basis because the editing tools are so simple and it's all there in one place. So I'm 
able to produce a higher volume of videos on the app and those often go to my IGTV channel and to my Instagram stories and I should say now also if we're not connected on Instagram please go ahead and follow me and say hi because I love getting to have more in-depth conversations with you guys and Instagram DM has proven to be a really great way for a lot of YouTube people to kind of come over and continue our relationship and continue conversations so I love hearing from you all on there don't be shy and slide into the DMs. Speaking of jump rope one of the biggest revelations that I've had in the last like three maybe six months I'm going to say also is that finding ways to include content creation as part of your everyday routine has been amazing for me to allow myself to actually create more content. The most basic example of this might be Instagram stories. So just being able to post a story on your way into work or post a photo of your lunch that day or post a photo of your morning coffee and put a poll up and say like, who needs coffee? Me, me and red. Those are really great ways to kind of create as you go. And even if you're just taking a few seconds out of your day to snap a photo and post a caption, your audience is going to register that as a form of you creating more content. I personally have really loved being active on Instagram stories, even though my posting on my Instagram feed has gone way down in recent months because of algorithm changes. And because again, I'm trying to focus on that quality over quantity because my motto of the year is create better. If you guys watched my kind of 2020 strategy video, I talk all about that. And now apps like Jump Rope and TikTok have made it so easy for me to create beauty content, which is basically my main niche here on YouTube and also on Instagram and TikTok. And those apps have allowed me to create videos just doing my normal daily makeup and daily skincare routines. For a Jump Rope video or for a TikTok, I can plop my phone up in my medicine cabinet, pretty much go about my skincare or makeup routine as I normally would and maybe take a few extra minutes to set something time to the music on TikTok or adjust the volume or positioning of something over on Jump Rope. But the other day before work, I actually filmed two videos on Jump Rope. That was my morning skincare routine and then an everyday makeup routine video. And I even filmed a TikTok for my hairstyling. So that was actually three videos that I filmed before work and it didn't take much more than maybe an additional 15 minutes to kind of account for some of the editing and some of the additional work that I needed to do while I was filming those videos. So I'm really grateful for apps like that that are making it easier to create content and incorporate that content creation into my own routine. And if that's not something that you like to do, if your niche is maybe something like food, just consider making quick little videos about your recipes, like what you're cooking for dinner, or what you're making for breakfast. If your niche is social media, maybe you could do a screen recording of exactly how you post your Instagram stories, which again is something that you kind of have to be doing anyway. They're just looking for opportunities to make it easier to kind of create as you go so you don't feel like you have to set aside all of this extra time and, you know, have the perfect lighting and the perfect moment to be creating your content, but that you can actually create more content on the fly. And the last thing I want to talk about, and this is kind of a tough love moment, and this is the hardest one, and I struggle with this too sometimes, is to just banish your excuses. It's so easy to just say, I don't have enough time in the day, or I don't have the right lighting yet. So like once I get that, then I'll start creating content. And I have been guilty of saying both of these things before. And if I could just encourage you to do one thing, it would be to find a way around the excuse, like find the workaround, figure out the solution, because that way you are the only one who is holding yourself back and it gives you the opportunity to skip right past that and just focus in on what you're great at, which is creating content. I'll give you a personal example of something that I've been struggling a lot with lately, which is that I want to be creating additional opt-ins for my website and I want to be attracting different kinds of people to subscribe for my mailing list so I can grow my newsletter subscribers. Right now I have a free opt-in on my professional website, austintosone.com, that gives you a tip sheet with tips for SEO or search engine optimization for your website. And I don't have any shortage of ideas for opt-ins for my website, 
but I haven't quite figured out how to link up MailChimp and then my website to allow multiple opt-ins. Like, is that gonna be a same newsletter block that I use in Squarespace that links back to MailChimp? Do I have to create a landing page on MailChimp instead of Squarespace? The whole thing has just thrown me off completely. And so for that reason, I haven't yet created multiple opt-ins for my website. I'm sharing this with you guys to hold myself accountable to learn what the workaround for this is and to make sure that I do make it a priority for Q one of this year to figure out how to do multiple opt-ins through my website if I manage my newsletter on MailChimp. That one little thing has been holding me back and meanwhile I could be signing up hundreds of new people to my mailing list if I just sit down and figure out this one thing. So I tell you guys this because I trust you and because I know there's no judgment just to show you that we've all been there and I myself am currently here with you. With that being said, that's everything I wanted to include in this video. I really hope you guys found this useful. If you have any questions about anything I spoke about in in today's video, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below, or you can also DM me on Instagram at Austin Tassone, and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you're not already, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and stick around. I upload new videos every Sunday with tips for content creators and also beauty videos reviewing products and talking about new launches and things happening in the beauty space. Thanks again for watching. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!